The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and quite a positive trend, quite a rebound. When you look at the action we had on Monday, of course, the sell-off. Yesterday, intraday lows made at about 10.45 a.m. in the morning. And you're talking about right now, you're almost 100 points above where we were at just yesterday morning. Not to mention, if you back things up, you're talking about 150 points now from where we were on Monday's lows. And we back things up in terms of where we are in terms of all-time highs. Folks, you're talking about only about 80 points. You're talking about within about 2% of all-time highs. NASDAQ 100, boy, you talk about a move. You back things up on a 15-minute, 15,960. You're more than 800 points off of Monday's lows. When you back it up to just yesterday, you're talking about almost 500 points as we inch towards 16,000. We'll go over the CPI data in a moment that we got at 8.30 this morning. 7% inflation year over year. Quite a number, biggest number since 1982. We jumped in the Dow. The Dow, you're talking about 700 points off of the lows that we had Monday. Not quite the same acceleration as some of the other indices. Percentage-wise, you jump to the Russell. Russell sitting right at 2,200. You're talking about 75 points off Monday's lows. Bitcoin with quite a rebound. You got below that critical 40,000 mark. And just like that, Bitcoin is up more than 10% off of where we were, the lows on Monday. Crude. How about an 82 handle for crude? Perfect. We're going to be talking to our man Teddy Kegstat from forex-trading-unlock.com at 40 past the hour. We always talk a little bit about the crude market. He's been a crude bull for a while. Uh, and this crude market, man, you talk about a rebound. It seems like all... Uh, Naturally, we would be on our way to at least the highs that we had recently at about $85, quite the pop in crude, quite the rebound you had in crude. You back it up. I mean, you're only talking about in December, folks. We had a price of $62. We now had a price of $82. Just like that, you had $20 in just over the span of about a month in that crude market as we inch towards recent highs of 85 bucks. Gold contract with quite a day yesterday. You put on the 15-minute. Gold charges higher, gold sitting basically right near the highs we were yesterday. You inch above that number barely to 1825. You back off a bit, you got silver up 12 pennies. Silver adding about a dollar from where we were on Friday's action to 2293. And we jumped to the all important notes and bonds. Chairman Powell yesterday in front of the Senate uh, committee for his renomination and the market. Liked what he was saying, to say the least. Uh, Ten-year right now, we're talking about a yield of 1.72%, about 1.718 to be exact, the yield on the 10-year. We were approaching about 1.8% at some of the lows on Monday. We started the year off about 1.4 to 1.5%, so quite a rise in that context. Let's jump over to the VIX this morning. We got the volatility index. Quite a spike on Monday as the market sold off, and just like that, we're under 18, 17, 80 uh, VIX, important to remember, predicated off the S&P. When you have it predicated off the S&P, you got the S&P sitting within 80 points of all-time highs. You're up 22 points coming into the opening bell. S&Ps are up half a percent. NASDAQ 100, you're talking about nine-tenths percent. The Dow up about three-tenths percent. The Russell up, up about half a percent. All right, jumping over to the headline number this morning, inflation. Largest number since 1982. That was the same headline that we got for November CPI, which had a number of 6.8%. This number comes in even hotter, but right at expectations, market analysts were looking for 7% inflation for the month of December. CPI hits that number. That again, highest number since 1982, 7%. Largest 12-month gain since June of 1982, to be exact. Uh, 0.5% for the month. And that was exceeding forecast, which was 0.4%, I believe. When you look at CPI in black, you look at the core CPI data in pink, you see the rise that we have. You see it going back to 1982. Let's pull it up. They're talking about middle of the year 1982. And you can see that that was when we got that steep, steep decline in the early 80s 
from inflation out of control, but we are right back to those numbers. And look at the core number in pink. So that excludes food and energy. Energy, as we all know, through the roof. I just talked about crude hitting 82 bucks right now. Excluding that number, the so-called core prices accelerated from a month earlier, larger than forecast, 0.6%. Core is going up faster than the market even anticipated. The measure jumped 5.5% from a year earlier. The core number, that's the biggest jump since 1991. Increase in the CPI was led by higher prices for shelter, and used vehicles, a common theme recently. Food costs also contributed. Energy prices, which were a key driver of inflation through most of 2021, fell last month. So you have energy falling. That's in the mainline number, though, that still comes in at 7%. You take that out of the core number, though, and core actually beats with a higher number than the market was looking for. The data bolster expectations that the Fed will begin raising interest rates in March, a sharp policy adjustment. I mean, that's one take on it, right? If it bolstered that the Fed was going to hike, 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 you wouldn't see the market accelerating higher. So keep that in mind. Pretty much at estimate of what the market was looking for. Uh, and yeah, you're sitting on an unemployment rate of just under 4% as we come into that number. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks as we kick things off. We'll kick it off with Amazon. Quite a day for Amazon yesterday. I think you were up almost 2% at one point on Amazon, trading up almost 100 bucks in the middle of the day. Amazon shares, you're talking about up $210 from Monday's lows. 3334, you're gonna open almost 1% higher in the pre-market. Microsoft shares, quite a rebound as well. You were down to 304 on Monday. You gained $14 from that price point. You're going to open solid $3.60 higher. That's more than a 1% pop on Microsoft shares. Let's see how Apple is trading this morning. Apple with a nice pop. You're going to open more than $1.50. I mean, look at these stocks. Apple, Microsoft. Let's jump around to Google. This is why you get the NASDAQ 100 up almost 9 tenths percent right now. Uh, Google, $25. Yeah, 8 tenths, 9 tenths. All the FANG stocks opening up. Let's see how Facebook is trading this morning. Up about a couple dollars at 336. We jump over to Netflix. I'm going to open a bit higher at about 545 as well. All right, let's jump around to some of the retail stocks. Walmart shares. Going to open a little bit uh, lower, it looks like, on a tick. We jump to Target shares. 22 28 a little bit higher i think we get kb homes today with their earnings kb homes gonna basically be flat right now jumping over to the analyze tab we got about a two dollar move priced in just under a five percent move you jump over to the earnings tab yes they are today out with their numbers i believe let's put this on a short-term time frame not out yet i think they're out after the bell today kb homes out with their numbers about a two dollar move priced in for their earnings Jump to Toll Brothers. Toll Brothers this morning going to open basically flat 69.63. Let's jump over to some of the banks as they come out on Friday. JP Morgan, 167.50, basically flat this morning as you get yield sitting at about 1.72%. Bank of America as well. City had quite a pop yesterday. You look at City's action, right? From about 66 to 68.52 last night on City shares trading higher back this morning to 67.33, but still a little bit positive on the market. We jump to those notes and bonds as we come into this first break. And yeah, this is looking at five minute action. Look where we were on that 830 number. You actually spiked to 128.12. You're right now at 128.18. So we actually have a little bit of higher price and lower yield on that CPI number on the 10 year right now as we're sitting at 1.723% on the 10 year. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be coming back. We'll be talking to our man, Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Fast Market. We'll be right back, folks. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free! Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P futures up 17 points right now. NASDAQ futures up a solid 7 tenths percent, 112 in the green at 15,943, bumping up against that 16,000 mark. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network on Fast Market, breaking down the day's market action, walking you through hypothetical trade setups, talking about options, talking about defined risk. Kevin Hinks, we got a CPI number out this morning. And man, a lot's happened in 24 hours since we talked to you yesterday. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, you know, a <clears throat> couple things. Number one, it's pretty evident that Jerome Powell has become proficient in delivering the right message that the market likes. Even when it's a message that interest rates could be going higher, he still presents it in a way that the markets like. And then we get today's uh, CPI number, and I think the market can be happy about a lot of things in this CPI number. Like, Tommy, the biggest plus, the biggest inflationary factor in the CPI number was used cars and trucks, up 3.5%. New vehicles, up 1%. Most of the world can look at that number within the data tables and say, that's not going to be forever right cars used cars and trucks aren't going to go up forever and so then you look at apparel well apparel's up 1.7 percent those are effects of supply constraints maybe those will dissipate over time so when you look at what was up what was inflationary in today's report they all look like things that can be discussed and talked away as not permanent Tommy it's pretty cool man the market reaction the rebound we got off some of the lows on Monday um, just accelerated whether you're talking about Tuesday Monday yesterday of course Chairman Powell pretty strong words I think I saw one um, phrase and I'm probably not going to get it exactly right but that they'd be in a he envisioned something about a low interest environment for an extended yeah. period of time or so something to yeah. that tune which obviously the market loves to hear um, and things really took off uh, but Tommy, it's important. It's important for your viewers, if I could, for for one. Please. Uh, the headlines that everyone's going to read today, they're going to beat you over the head with seven percent inflation, right? That's the number that everyone's going to talk about. But remember, ninety-one percent of this number is already we already knew, right? 
all they do with the year-over-year number is take the 12-month number away, put in today's number, and that adds up to the year-over-year number. So we pretty much knew this number was going to be high, but don't get scared of that because the market knew, like I said, 11 twelfths or 91% of this number was already out there in the world. So the fact that it was, it was 0.8 a month ago came down to 0. 0.5, and what and what made up that point five is what this market is focusing on today, Tommy. It's a great point, man. And uh, the fact that I think it's coming pretty close to estimates as well, because if estimates go according to the next year, then yeah, they're at seven percent right now. But the estimates are that they're going to wane for the reasons some of which that you just stated. So maybe the market's saying, okay, we're not missing like we missed last year um, to the tune of rapid accelerated inflation that was not in the estimates at the time. It's in the estimates right now, and over the core period of X amount of months, whatever that is, um, maybe it wanes, and that's the argument. And the market's going with it, man. And the Fed chairman seems like he's going with it as well. With that in mind, Kevin, so we got CPI, we got retail sales coming out Friday, we got some earnings trickling out, we got banks on Friday. What are you guys talking about on Fast Market at 12 noon today? You know, pre-earnings before we get into earnings season, and we do have one earnings. We have Delta Airlines that, like Folio, will do a presentation on today, but we're really focusing on the high-profile names. That's one great thing about the beginning of earnings season. So today we're going to talk about Facebook, like Folio will do a presentation on Delta, and then we'll talk about PayPal in the third segment. So big names today, as always. Facebook, man. I have been talking a lot about Kevin, uh, Kevin, Facebook, Kevin, because I got an Oculus 2 for Christmas. And so I am personally not a fan of Facebook and the way they've handled data and, and, and what goes along with all of, all of the baggage that we all know they have. But I'll tell you, Kevin, it was pretty mind blowing, man. And I've been talking about it with my friends. I've talked about it to the viewers um, because it's pretty immersive. And I can see now why Mr. Zuckerberg um, sees that that may be the future. Because what I started thinking about, Kevin, is that, you know, I put on the headset and I got it for Christmas. And, you know, I don't play a ton of video games. But the immersive nature of even watching YouTube videos where I can literally sit in Rome on the Colosseum, right? And you're sitting there and you're looking around and you're in 3D. I said, it's going to become an educational tool where you can literally sit in the Egyptian pyramids as you learn about history. Um, it was pretty, pretty mind blowing, man, to see that experience. So that VR deal as Facebook comes into the meta. Um, there's my two cents on it. It was pretty cool. Have you tried the Oculus at all? Oh, I've had it on because uh, TD Ameritrade has like a feature about it. So I tried nice. it at one of our events and it's, it, you're right. It, it, it is really, it, it's incredible on your senses. You know, you're yeah. like, whoa, man, yeah. it is, it is incredible. It's definitely something to get used to, but man, like I said, I get it too why he's doing that. Imagine instead of turning on your computer and looking at your trading screen, you put on the goggles and look yeah. at your trading screen. It's coming and it's pretty cool. Right. Now what I also disclaimer that with as trading is as big as your wall. It's 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 360 degrees, man, at 8K yeah. plus, right, is the deal. You know where right. I went from there, Kevin? I, I watched a YouTube VR video, and the way the cool ones were 360 degrees at 8K. So there was super high def. You know, you're in the immersive. Yeah. You turn your head. You're looking everywhere. And then I went to, man, this is going to be the future, that all video is going to be produced in that. So then the cameras I'm looking at, right, of 8K 360-degree cameras, but I started imagining, Kevin, you know, for big events, right, for a wedding or something like that, you are going to start seeing people recording in this technology because how cool will it be that 10, 15, 20 years down the road, you snap on a headset or whatever technology exists, and you literally walk through your wedding or your whatever that event is, right, yep. that it's going to become, I mean, it's just going to become the standard um, bearer of that technology. So it was pretty cool. Now, as a trader, though, Kevin, I said, you know what? They're going to be able to spend a lot of money on this, man, because it's going to be kind of like that last mile of making it perfect, right? Because the person who makes it perfect, that's like the, the holy grail, man, if you, if you can mimic real life. But how much money, how many billions, if not trillions, is it going to take to get there? And I imagine Mr. Zuckerberg, he's willing to spend some cash if he thinks there's, there's pot at the end of that rainbow, man, um, uh, gold at the end of that rainbow. Well, Kevin, I'm interested, man. I'll be watching the show today to get your guys' take on Facebook, uh, Delta Airlines. We always look forward to the program, man. You have a great Wednesday. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. 
You too, Kevin. Take care. Folks, every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time, Fast Market, Kevin Higgs, Tom White. Should be an outstanding program. I look forward to seeing what they have to say about Facebook. If you've been listening to my program, uh, at least since uh, after Christmas, pretty, pretty fascinating technology. But how much are they going to have to spend to make it perfect? Because there's a lot of technology to go for that last mile to make it perfect. Right now, all you have is headsets. You're going to be wearing suits. Right. So you can get sense, you know, you can feel sensation across your body if you're in an environment, et cetera. There's a lot of technology to go, but we're right on the cusp of some pretty cool stuff. If you have not tried one, I encourage you to give it a try because it's pretty enlightening to try and discover where that technology is going because it is computer screens. It's just going to be immersive technology. And then you add um, not even just virtual reality, right? Augmented reality. The glasses then provide you look through to reality, and then you add augmented things in technology in there. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got the S&P futures opening up about 17 points right now. That's about three tenths percent. NASDAQ 100 up about seven tenths percent, just under the 16,000 mark, 115 points in the green. You get the Dow up about three tenths percent, 115 points in the green as well. And the Russell up about six tenths percent. We jump to Bitcoin holding well, right at about 44,000. You look, you're talking about more than 10% from where we were yesterday, maybe a little bit of a moment of truth. We'll see if we come back down and test that moment of truth again at 40,000 on Bitcoin. You got Ethereum, 
quite a pop as well. Ethereum's up more than 10% from that low yesterday as well. Crude sitting comfortably just near $82. Remarkable acceleration in crude continues to higher prices in gold. 1822, right near the highs of yesterday near the close as well. All right, jumping around to what else we have happening today. We jumped to DoorDash. DoorDash, that's a solid almost 6% pop. DoorDash gets an upgrade. Evercore, uh, upgraded, upgraded to outperform from inline delivery service, strong fundamentals, and the stock is at an attractive valuation. And separately, Facebook was named, um, named DoorDash CEO Tony Zhu. Chu Su to its board of directors. Interesting. So you got the CEO of DoorDash is now a on the board at Facebook. Uh, but the real impact there is that you got an upgrade. Talking about that company, um, strong fundamentals and attractive at the valuation. DoorDash up to 151. You take a look at a little longer term time frame here, and that's what they're talking about when they talk about valuation. Because you were just at 257 exactly two months ago, right? Ah, uh, no, close. Almost two months ago, within two months ago, November 15th, 257.25, uh, two days ago, you were at 120. I mean, remarkable, right? This is where some of the lows, you're talking about an equity that just popped 30 dollars from 121 that is a remarkable pop for doordash but there you go uh maybe maybe evercore was in there buying at, at a portion of it when you were down at those valuations which is the reason why you got some of the pop that you did but of course the market turned around about 2.5 to almost three percent the pop you got in the market from the lows over there as well all right what else we got jumping down the equity list of some companies that are making moves you got diddy trading higher in the pre-market on reports that it's in talks for a second quarter Hong Kong IPO as it continues to process the delisting from the NYSE. Yeah, listen, be careful of these equities, but there is an opportunity. That's the, that's that's putting it lightly. Diddy up 5%. But you talk about an opportunity, I am not looking for opportunities to buy an equity that looks like this. Um, you know, you're, you're talking super long term. Maybe you're trying to find a bottom here, some company like Alibaba. You know, you're back to, to some pretty ridiculous pricing when you talk about you back to May of 2017 prices for Alibaba. Does it even go back further than that? I don't think it does. Yeah, I guess it does. I mean, look, you're back to 2014. You're back to almost 2014 prices in Alibaba. It was trading at 120. We were trading at 120 at the end of last year for Alibaba. I mean, China, they put the clamp down and just morally, I don't think I would be investing in these companies supporting, unfortunately, what's going on over in China. But they need economic success for the future as well. They've just kind of recalibrated how that's going to occur and the valuations that the market had in it as Xi kind of um, flexed his muscles to let everybody know who was in charge. But they need economic growth in a big way, and, and Xi knows that as well. So there, there will be companies that succeed out of that. And there's your gaps on Alibaba as it pops continually. But, you know, if you're in them, be aware that you can lose 50 75%. That's that's what you have to realize if you're making those types of trades. And of course you do when you're getting these types of pops. I mean, you just traded from 108 to 138. You just gained 25 to 30 percent almost to start the year. If you're looking for those types of returns, you better be aware that you're risking some substantial losses on the downside as well when you're trading Chinese equities right now. All right. What else we got going on? Let's see. Yeah, Biogen. Now, this one is going to be a controversial one that will be talked about for some time. So Biogen's lower. Medicare said last night that they're going to only partially cover the new Alzheimer's drug. Talk about uh, a mess on the the hands of, of many involved. Uh, there's your pop when this thing gets approved. We're all probably somewhat familiar with the fact that it's become a big controversy and you had people quitting over at the FDA advisory panel. The advisory panel wanted more data. They were overruled. It was approved by the FDA. It's the first Alzheimer's drug in many, many years, to say the least. I don't even know how long. I should. Long, long time. Um, horrible diagnosis that is terminal. No real treatment options. So you can see how something being approved like that, the first treatment option in a long time. Now, what you have happen is the FDA approves it, and then... Medicare usually covers FDA-approved medicines. And what happens is, is you have private insurance companies then use Medicare as the standard for what they cover many times. So this is going to end up potentially impacting people on private insurance as they make their decision off of where Medicare makes it. Then you look at the people that are 
going to need this possible treatment or want it because of the age group they fall in and because of Medicare and the age group that people are on in Medicare, 80 percent of the people that are going to be potentially taking this drug would qualify for Medicare. It's a tough deal. It seems like that it has not proven that it is effective. What it's proven is that it might impact the symptoms that Alzheimer's present, which they think is the reason for some of the harm that that does. And I'm putting it in like the most plain terms I can from a general, general understanding of things. I could be completely misconstruing some of what the argument is because it's so technical. Um, bottom line is, this one is an unfortunate situation when you now have the FDA approving medicine that Medicare won't cover. That's an unfortunate situation as you move forward, to say the least. And that's what happens with Biogen. And it'll be interesting to see how this plays out in the future. Dish. Dish and DirecTV once again in merger talks, according to sources. The satellite TV companies have held on and off talks periodically over the last 20 years. Dish and DirecTV with the latest round said to be pushed forward by DirecTV's minority owner, TPG Capital. Dish drained higher in the pre-market. We jumped over there's a pop-up, 2.9%. You were higher yesterday as well. You give back some of those gains this morning. Let's see how some of the FANG stocks are opening up with the NASDAQ up 130. Amazon adding about 4 tenths percent. Back on a 15-minute chart, 33.19. Let's see how Microsoft is opening up this morning, up 1.6%. There's a pop for you. Uh, Microsoft, let's see how Apple's trading. Up about 7 tenths percent. Google shares up 1.3%. Man, you got some real acceleration. If you got Google up 1.3, you got Microsoft up one6 should almost be up more than 120 points in the NASDAQ 100. Excuse me, but nonetheless, uh, there we sit. Let's jump over even. Market watch, jump into the indices. NASDAQ 100. Yeah, look at this. So Facebook in the red, but barely by four one hundredths of a percentage point. You got Microsoft up 1.35. Apple's up half a percent, Google up a full percent, Amazon up half a percent, Tesla's up 1.5 percent. What do we have lower? We got some of the, what, FinTech, you got PayPal a little bit lower, you got Fiserv a little bit lower by a percent, you have Pepsi a little bit lower, Monster barely unchanged it looks like, but yeah, the juggernauts in NVIDIA up 1.6 percent. This market could easily be up even a little bit higher with how you have some of the juggernaut big, big companies up here up more. You're only looking at an index right now up seven tenths to eight tenths percent. Meanwhile, you got the biggest company, second biggest company in the world out there, right? Up more than 1%. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be talking Forex when we come back with our man, Teddy Cakes. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now up about 13 points, giving up some of the gain that you had early in the uh, session up to almost 47.35. And just like that, you're down to about 47.17 right now. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Every Wednesday at 40 past the hour, we talk to Teddy. You can reach Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. We got a lot to talk about today. I bet we do, man. I was jumping around. We got a move, uh, of course, this morning in the dollar and some action. But, man, we got some moves uh, to kick off the new year, to say the least. Where do you want to kick things off, Ted? Teddy? Oh, okay. Well, obviously, the dollar has definitely been under pressure for the past couple of days. Um, I would like to start with the U.S. dollar Canada. You had a textbook uh, head and shoulders pattern that was confirmed yesterday. You got a nice little follow through to the downside today. And you're aiming towards a 200-day moving average. You're not too far away from that. So I would be mindful of any U.S. dollar Canada trader out there that um, even if we get some dollar strength, um, I don't think you're going to find that in the U.S. dollar Canada. I think you have a nice short-term downtrend. Um, remember that it's been kind of neutral for the past couple of months trying to become a bull and i really don't see that that's going to be able to manifest anytime soon i think you're really going to be banging on support on that one so that's definitely a key market to look at for um as far as the forex market is concerned nice yeah quite a pullback recently from almost 130 to 125 right but you get that low of 123 back there recently towards the end of mm -hmm. last year right Right. So now now when we go back to the other currencies, it's pretty interesting. If you look at the euro, it finally had a breakout to the upside today. OK, now the pound has been trending for already to pass basically five, six sessions. Um, the U.S. dollar Swiss, you know, all in all, if you look at the euro and the Swiss, they've basically been in a very tight range for the past three, four months. And right now you have the euro U.S. dollar that is finally breaking out to the upper part of that range. I would not expect much follow through on this move. I think you have maybe at the best, uh, we could get up to probably around eh, 115.25 possibly as a top for the Euro US dollar because there's a lot of nuances that I think they're gonna put a drag on the Euro, okay? So now the British pound, obviously because of oil, I think is gonna be very strong moving forward over the next couple of months. I mean, we have oil now has hit that up into the $80 level in that new range and i think we'll be pushing 90s before we see it you know know it in the next like week or two you know and if that yeah. if we get that follow through i would expect to see strength in the british pound u.s dollar continue okay the euro u.s dollar like i said though i don't think that's going to be a big driver so so right now the dollar index is very re reflective of the fact that other currencies are gaining on the dollar currently in the short run okay i would expect to see some divergence as far as the dollar index is concerned probably arising after this week you got to remember we have a lot of economic numbers that come out today tomorrow and friday you know so i mean and then it's not just in the u.s 
It's also in, in, in the EU and also in the UK. So now we already know that we have the Fed leaning towards raising rates three, maybe four times this year, as far as Goldman um, brought up this um, recently. You know, yeah. so that that's already factored into the market. Okay, but the oil trade is definitely on the on the table there. And if if that if we don't see a pullback in oil, it doesn't matter if the if the if the interest rates do have a big significant move or not. You're going to see a big bounce again in the U.S. dollar yen, like. Notice how the dollar is selling off and we have a breakout in the euro. We have a sell off in the Swiss. We have a rally in the pound. Australian dollar is making a new move high today. But if you if you look at the U.S. dollar yen, it's not getting battered at all. You know, it's holding up. And that's because yeah. of the oil trade. You know, I mean, no matter what, interest rates are already factored in. So now definitely oil becomes a factor. And I think you're going to see this divergence that as the pound, for instance, continues to be a bull moving forward, as oil does, at least until it gets to around the 100 to $105 level, I think once you get into that area, then you'll probably see the pound fall back, you know, as far as the oil trade and even in the yen. But until we get to that, those levels, I think the trend's going to keep on going. Yeah, quite the move in oil, man. This pound even quite the move from 131 to 136, just like that. Lots of green bars involved, very few red bars. And mm -hmm. crude, I mean, things got a little dicey there going back to where we were in terms of 62. You're talking about back in December 2nd. It's only January 12th. You're back to 82. We have that recent highs of 85 bucks. Um, but now that we're above 81, 82, I mean, the last six weeks, Teddy, I know mm -hmm. you know, but it's just been constant higher prices there. Uh, $100, very natural number, seems like, in our head. We haven't seen it in a while. We were over that sure. number for a long period of time, man. Um, mm -hmm. Seems like it might be on its way to to at least the recent highs of 85 bucks um, mm -hmm. in the near future, in my opinion. Right. If not, you know, pushing it even higher from there. Mm -hmm. So with the CPI debt out this morning, uh, of course, we have the dollar pulling back a little bit, putting mm -hmm. bids in that. How do you see, you know, the, the inflation story playing out over the next weeks or months as as that pushes into the dollar? Do you see the, the inflation as it wanes? Explode. I think we're going to continue to go on like we did last year. I think that everything pretty much is going to double again over the course of the next year. You know, I really do. I think you're going to see it a lot in the soft um, commodities, in the meats. I think you're going to see it in all of the hard metals and stuff like that. A lot of the stuff that you use in production. I, I really think that in the in the in the tangible sense of 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 the economy, for commodities especially, you're going to see at least 50% inflation, if not 100% inflation over the course of the next year, which then is going to factor in. Here's the thing we haven't seen a lot of inflation in yet, Tommy, and it really worries me is that what happens when the service sector starts to hit with inflation? You know, like we, we all know that when we go to the grocery store, the gas pump, or you're buying goods, sure. that we've had it, you know, but if you look at relative services, there hasn't been that much inflation. Well, pretty soon people who are in the service industry are gonna be like, well, everything I do in my life, I have to pay twice for, double now. Totally. You know, they're gonna be like, why wouldn't I charge more money now? You know, so, yeah. and I think that, that when that hits, we really are going to have a big slowdown in the economy because it's just going to be such a drag, you know, and yeah. especially with we have we have an economic or excuse me, an employment um, situation. Now, we've never had in this country before. We have people that don't want to return to work. And then we have people that are being removed from work because of a choice. You know, whether you get man, whether you put it, whatever mandate you want to put down on, on people, if it inf impacts employment, you know, this is going to also impact inflation, supply chains. Now we're not even worried about supply chains coming globally. We're going to have our own supply chain issues within the country, you know. Sure. So and that, I think, is something that's going to pan out huge. And it's not going to really hit us too much over the next three months. But I think that definitely by the second and third quarter, uh, we're going to be looking back at 2021 and being like, oh, why couldn't we just have that inflation? <laughs> you know? But watch Sad out if that comes in, man, because what's right. what's so interesting, too, just in light of Pretty much what you're saying is that uh, the estimates right now, you know, we just hit 7%, but that was the estimate. So the market can trade higher when we have a CPI number that's 7% year mm -hmm. over year. Um, but that number is supposed to come down dramatically. So it's not hard to hit the estimates in the market to be okay when CPI is supposed to be 7%, folks. But where are we going to be? And that's where, I, you know, I can't wait as a trader when we're coming into mm -hmm. some of those reports, whether it's CPI, whether it's, you know, wage data. Um, that we're supposed to see, and time flies, man. We're going to be there right. before we know it. We're supposed to see some pretty rapid decreases this coming year. Um, maybe we'll start getting to the section of, 
you know, next year that we'll have some comps that might help that out a mm -hmm. little bit in terms of where we are. But time is coming, man, and we got to hit those sure. numbers and, and we'll see what happens. Right. Well, Teddy, I appreciate the conversation as always, man. And we look forward Thank to talking you. to you next week. US dollar yen 122, baby. <laughs> 122. All right. I'm going to write it down. We're going to pull it up next week when we chat with you Wednesday, man. All right. Have a great week, care. Teddy. Thanks, man. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come right back after the break. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, billable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up 26 points right now. That's more than half a percent in the green. You got the NASDAQ 100 up three quarters percent right now, and the Dow up half a percent as well. Jumping around to other articles I was reading this morning, I want to talk real quickly about Apple. So Apple, they're in a potential bid for the Major League Baseball's weekday package. Could bring a big new player into live sports. You're going to see it happen, folks. There is nothing like live sports uh, in terms of a necessity to view it live. As in, can you imagine whatever company pays for the rights of the NFL, and the NFL is so smart that they don't give it to any one company. They give you Sunday night, somebody gets Monday night, two companies get Sunday football, right? They diversify themselves, they're very intelligent. But the point being is, you don't watch live sports on replay. Some people do. But you need to watch that live in the moment. So if you're a streaming service and you own a live sports package, you don't have the ability as a 
consumer of that package to cancel at any point in time if you enjoy that live sporting. It's it's going to be interesting to see how the live sports plays into things. But that is a commodity unlike anything else in the streaming platform. It's part of the reason why I like Disney as well, because their ownership of ESPN gives them access to that. Now, man, you got to pay for that content, and they're going to be fighting with Apple now. They're going to be fighting with Netflix, etc., but having ESPN in there, ESPN being able to license their brand for sports betting, etc., that's pretty cool as well. This article, too, I was reading about, this one came out yesterday, but this is talking about J.P. Morgan, fixed income chief, warning on the Fed's move to cut inflation, saying that hiding cash might not be that bad right now with the way that yields are going up and bond prices are going down. 1.76% is where it was at as as of the time of writing this. The one thing I wanted to point out, he says the 10-year could be as high as 3% this year. 3%. Man, that 10-year hits 3% this year. Watch out for some of those growth stocks, folks. Uh, the the base case, most of Wall Street looking for about 1.87, 2.3. But guess what? We just went from 1.5 to 1.8, and it's only January 12th. All right, folks, thanks so much for starting your trading day with me. Stay tuned. We got live programming all day. Should be another interesting one in the market. Uh, S&Ps, 77 points away from all-time highs right now. Remarkable. We got Basil Chapman upcoming, coming up right now with the Tiger Technician's Hour, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Have a great Wednesday.